Okay then, episode in action. Number four. Number four, one, two, three, four. It's four. How everyone is doing this wonderful day, whichever day you're listening. We're here on Saturday, back in the studio. Back with in the studio. Another episode. So last time we were talking about the business stuff a lot Mm -hmm. Um, this time we're kind of gonna talk mindset a lot and wellness health but still of course um like i call it wealthness too yeah new word wealth yeah wealthness i Mm think you know created that word last time anyways um we um, think, you know, it's all connected, hence the name Brilliant Wealth and Wellness with mm-hmm. Big Cat, a.k.a. Nicholas down here. Um, yeah, so my biggest um, thing and takeaway and uh, I guess thing I want to share this week is first step is showing up. You know, whenever you want to do, taking the first step uh, is half the work. The rest is almost more than that. Yeah. You know, just getting out there and doing something that maybe is challenging. Maybe it's uh, you know pushing uh, your comfort level, or just something that um, you've never done before. But I think a lot of people look at maybe the end result of something, and it looks too daunting. But if you always look at the end result, it's it, it's always going to be daunting. Right? That's such a good point. Yeah. You know, so um, I think one thing we wanted to talk about was the Spartan race, right? At some point yeah. in this episode. Yeah. Well, we did the Spartan race this past Saturday. Yeah, and you know we can kind of break that down into. Well, uh, before we do that, maybe you should explain what what is the, even a spartan race you know a lot of people probably don't even know what we're talking about well we did the 21k the beast mm-hmm. and we didn't really train properly for it if there is such a thing i mean mm-hmm. yeah there is such a thing we should have hiked more but you know we try to stay active in general mm-hmm. and especially since january this year 2023 my year's new year's resolution was to get back more into the gym and just mm-hmm. start building more, like just lean mass more muscle again because I turned 35 you know and it's like that threshold where you become like an older adult <laughs> so uh yeah so but um the the Spartan is they have different types of races but usually mm-hmm. it's a race with obstacles and there's different lengths mm-hmm. like 5k super i believe it's like 10k 21k the beast ultra 50k then they have trail races 100k up to 200 miles and i think yeah. uh, you know what differentiates spartan races from other races you know we're, we we live in vermont colchester area so there's you know there's tons of 5k races all over you know, everywhere has 5K races. Every weekend. You know, and it's pretty, you know, okay, here's a course. Maybe it goes around a couple of businesses in town or, you know, a loop on the pavement. Or the park. You know, and you're, okay, you're done in hour, you know, or, or however long. But what separates Spartan from that is you're like, oh, well, there's a, a 5K Spartan race. Okay, I'll be done that in, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes. Because, you know, the well, length is that really one not that far. Three you know? hours, though. But, yeah. you know, it's a lot of elevation. It's climbing through obstacles or over obstacles, right? You know, so... Steep incline. Yeah, and so that's decline. kind of their play, you know, on... Okay, yeah, there's these 5Ks, there's these half marathons, there, there's these marathons. But, like, you know, let's add something a little little extra <laughs> to it too. They uh, wanted to you. murder you. They want to make it as difficult as they can, especially the Killington one. Yeah, so Killington is is difficult. Is somewhat famous in the Spartan community for its its terrain. You know, the terrain is quite challenging. There's a lot of vertical muddy uh, muddy rocks, correct. You know, the weather is grass. very unpredictable. Um, you know, it could be, I think it was maybe what, 60s? It was kind of, nice. You know, 60s at, you For know, me. the registration area. And then you go up to the top of the mountain and it's like 40 and it's windy. Um, but, you know, the thing with Spartan is 
and it goes back to what we were just talking about of, you know, is just, you know, that first step that showing up and, you know, if you break down the, our whole day, I think it was, you know, from leaving home to getting home was probably like 12 hours. Well, right? we left about 8 a.m., I think. And I yeah. think we got back maybe, no, 10. like a 10 or 11. Yeah. So you're, you're talking, you know, 8, 10, 12 hours. But it's like hour and a half down. drive for us. But, you back know, and, yeah, but, you know break that first. down. You know, the first step of wealth or wellness or really anything is, is showing up. So, you know. Breaking well, deciding down. to do it. Yeah. So and then taking. Yeah. That so first the step. whole course of this, there is deciding to do it. That's you know one step of get a, you know how many people didn't even get to that step. Yeah. Signing up, getting in the car, getting the gear, getting there. You know, parking at K one and then taking the shuttle to, um, you know, to where it was the, the event actually was. Yeah. So you know, there's all these little things of you know just showing up. Putting one foot in front of the other, which was a common theme <laughs> yeah. throughout the day. Just take the next step. But, you know, you can kind of look at, you know, okay, there's the population, you know, of whoever, of people that want to get started in real estate, stocks, wellness, getting, you know, be getting back into shape. And, you know, there's always these first steps that you need to take. And you're already kind of ahead of people by taking just a lot of small yeah. steps, you know, signing up paying for it, driving there. Um, you know, when we s went over the first, I think there was, what, two or three obstacles before you even got to the start line. I mean, they were easy, you know, like a two-foot wall, and I think there was maybe climb under some barbed wire. But, you know, already you've already done two or three obstacles. You haven't even started. Well, you started. Right, but, you know, how many people haven't even gotten to that point, yeah. you know? And every step of the way, you're getting one step ahead of, someone behind you, you know, but you can also use that, you know, what I found when we were doing the Spartan race was everyone was so friendly, you know, and even people competing doing the ultra, which was, um, what was that, 50K, I think? Yeah. You know, so they're doing the course twice, you know, these guys walk by, or, you know, people, right. men and women, yeah. ton of, tons of different people, um, but, you know, they go by, and I'm just like, wow, like, man, this, this, this guy or girl, you know, it's animal, you know, they're just crazy doing this. And they're like, hey, you know, you guys are crazy too. You're doing a beast. Like, what are you doing out here? You know, you think we're crazy. You're crazy. We're all crazy, you know. And the, the Well, crazy in a good way. Yeah. The funny thing is, you know, everyone is, you know, having, you know, challenges. It's painful. It's exhausting. You know, I felt lightheaded a couple of times. And then I'm like thinking in my head, I – I paid for this, right? Yeah. Like I gave this guy Joe, who started this whole race, money for me well, to actually, be in pain. Well, actually, we got a special in this time because we yeah. went to the next conference and we got comp tickets. So we to still speak, had to pay a little bit. Except we had to pay taxes yeah. and fees. So thank you, Joe the Santa, for giving us yeah. this amazing invite. Because if not that, we probably not done it. And hey, we're gonna. It's going to pay off, I promise, because now maybe other people will do it because we're talking about it and yeah. we're promoting it for you now. And, so. you know, I think, you know, I didn't want to do it, you know, leading up to the week or two before I was like, you know, I don't want to do this. I don't want to spend all day outside, like, you know, whatever. I'd just rather, like, hang out at home, go to the gym, like, run around, do errands and stuff like that. But, you know, I'm so glad that I, I, I did do it. You oh, know? I'm happy to hear that. You know, yeah. so it was, um, you know, something that we got to do together, obviously. Yeah. We had to help each other, you yeah. know. You, you, obviously, you can do it by yourself. But, you know, having other Small people, fun. you know, um, there to help you and to talk with and, you know, to talk you out of yeah, tapping out yeah, or two just, miles left. And, yeah, and, or just, yeah. you know, um, you know, I, I need some I need some food. You know, you got any granola or, or anything? Electrolytes, yeah. mustard. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know if Heinz was like a sponsor of the Spartan races, but people are downing it's mustard. Like they think it's like the best for salt or electrolytes, but I don't know. I never been a fan of just like taking mustard and, you know when own. we were done and you know we jumped over the fire at the end and crossed the finish line and 
you know, I was thinking this whole way. I'm like, all right, I'm going to get, you know, some some medal or whatever. Okay, like, what am I going to do with this thing? And then the, the medal was actually pretty nice. But that <laughs> moment you got yeah. the medal, wasn't that the best moment of all day? Almost? I don't know. Honestly, I don't know if... Like jumping through the I fire? I think jumping through the fire and getting the medal was cool. But, you know, after those last couple of obstacles, you, you know, you kind of just walk around a slight little little turn and then there's you know maybe 10 feet and you jump over the fire i think that right there actually before i jumped over the fire was the best part because at that point it, it, it's over you know I'll, if i have to i'll crawl the last five yeah. feet you know or i'll roll or, or or whatever but you know yeah jumping over the fire was cool but like right before that when i'm like wow like i actually well you know we but you know just you know myself you know wow I, I did that and you know like your leader said maybe we should have we, no we should have trained you know more but um you know you on this course and there's a lot of people that you're like wow th those those guys they're gonna crush it you know like they're they're fit these fit guys buff guys or whatever these ladies they train all the time and you know, a mile down the course, you know, they're cramping up or or whatever. So another thing that I kind of took away from that is it's like the old saying, like you know, never judge a book by its cover. Yeah. But it or do don't think that other people are better for some reason. Yeah. They're yeah. the same people as you. You can, if they can do it, you can. Yeah. Do it. And you know, like we were um, that you know that it was the guy and his um, son. I forget what their name. They're from like Connecticut yeah. or whatever. But they kind of were about the same pace as I mm -hmm. and it's like you know this dad he's got like a t-shirt and shorts on like yeah. no water no snacks yeah. I'm like what is this guy thinking and then eight, my eight hour hike with no snacks yeah and yeah. then you know and then he's just like crushing he was it. looking forward to that banana though yeah which never <laughs> came to his <laughs> poor unfortunate guy Fate, you know, we're but. we're hiking with this guy for, you know, probably a couple hours. We we're kind of relatively same pace. And he's like, Oh, mile eight, it's like a little bit more to go. To like, reach the banana. Yeah, the bananas and peanut Which butter. Which were green anyways. Well, but, but then we got to mile eight and they're like, Yeah, sorry, we ran out of peanut butter yeah. and bananas. But, you know, and then, you know, when we were on the shuttle back to K one and, you know, we were talking to that, you know, couple and, you know, they're just they were crushing it you know they do a lot of hiking and you know that's their thing so it's an interesting slice of who actually does the spartan races because spartan it's not a specific discipline of mm -hmm. fo of sport it's not like just uh like basketball or swimming mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. just running it's like anyone can do it and that's what i think the goal of the founder was you know that they have the very widest demographic that mm -hmm. attend their courses and mm -hmm. races you know from moms to professional athletes mm -hmm. to students you know, to older some people yeah it's, cadets from norwich which is like a military academy yeah. but here. i want to yeah. bring back the point that you said mm -hmm. at the beginning mm -hmm. which i think is very important point um is that you know it's important to just take that first step and then mm -hmm. the snowball effect happens mm -hmm. you know like even with the real estate let's say okay you bought one building and then guess what? You built relationships with contractors. You built the relationship from the previous seller, perhaps. And now, hey, the people might reach out to you. They want to sell another property mm -hmm. uh, off market, you know. And that's how you get that snowball effect going. People say, "Well, how do I get in? I it's so difficult. It's so you much competition." Take the first step. Yeah, and maybe you'll pay more for that first step. Maybe it'll be more difficult that first step. Yeah. But once you got that completed, then you build relationships with people. You yeah. are more confident to do your second step. Like the uh, se now the other race like we I've done Spartan 11 years ago, a 5K mm -hmm. one. So I already mm -hmm. had some like familiarity with it, but Nick didn't had. Mm -hmm. But now, aren't you more confident to do the next one? Yeah. Because, yeah, you know, like you did the first one. one, you know? Yeah, and you know, like what you said, a lot of people, you know, they maybe they don't know how to get started in real estate or, you know, the 
the, the entry level is too hard. But, you know, there's different ways to look at it. You know, say, say you're renting right now, right? And yeah. you want to get into real estate. If your landlord allows it and you have another bedroom, can you do Airbnb? You know, can yeah, you or do sublet, sublet? Maybe, yeah. you know, and that's not necessarily, you know, yes, you're still renting, but you know, if you're subletting or doing Airbnb, I mean, you're at, you're a landlord, you know, at that point, you know, maybe yeah, you have you a little bit less risk because you know it's not your building, um, where you know you're not really charged. Well, the you still leading. should have probably insurance. I'm not sure how. Yeah. Right, but you know, it may or maybe you you know you own a condo, single family home. You want to get into real estate, maybe the. But then you could talk to that landlord and say, "Hey, if you mm -hmm. want to retire, mm -hmm. please let me know because mm -hmm. I want to buy a property like this." Mm -hmm. You know, so the first step is like just getting in, talking to people. But and you know that first step could be a lot of different things depending on what you want to to do, right? You know, if you want to get into stocks and you're not sure, yeah. you're like, well, I mean, what am I going to do? Take 10 grand and just blow it on some stock? It's like, no, maybe take take 10 bucks, right? Take yeah, 10 bucks start a week. Yeah, smaller. Yeah, and, you know, put it into, uh, you know, those large companies. You know, personally, you know, I'm in technology. That's my bread and butter. You know, M Microsoft, you know, I think they're one of the v most valuable, if not the most valuable company in this world. And you know now with buying, being able to buy fractional shares, you know, buy ten bucks worth of Microsoft every week. You know that's that's obtainable for almost everybody. And if you're like, well, ten bucks, you know that maybe that's a lot of money for you. Okay, well, maybe you can offset that by you know making coffee at home or you know um, I can't remember what the book was called, but you know everyone has their latte factor. You know, and that's you know people that go to Starbucks every day and spend five bucks. You know, on a drink. You know, okay, well, for a couple of days, you know, one day a week, just make coffee at home or, you know, or at, maybe you have access to coffee at the office and then, you know, put that money into something like, you know, into stocks. Or, or come up with ways to make more money. You know, they mm -hmm. also, the, there is point, um, yeah, there's a latte factor that's mm -hmm. important. And I do, I practice that, you know, mm -hmm. um, I'm a little bit... Um, kind of like Scrooge sometimes on not letting myself waste money or spend money because I think like, oh, I should invest or like I need to put this back into the biz grow the business. But, you, you know, but, but I think also it, it's important, though, for your health, you know, because this is wealth and, yeah. and, you know, wellness or just your wellness in general is, you know, life is now. Too, that's right? right yeah you know um, that's life, what i was gonna get to yeah life is now you know obviously you know going out and spending you know five thousand dollars on a handbag or something i don't i don't know you know if, if it's something that you really don't need but you know you should treat yourself right no absolutely but that that's what i was gonna yeah. get to that mm -hmm. you can save your way into wealth if you like lacking money for investing mm -hmm. or doing certain things you know the one step would be to think okay how do i make more money so i wouldn't have to deny myself that yeah. latte and still be able to put aside money right you and know? you know with this day and age of you know little side hustles and side gigs and you know i think when i say that people are like uber you know i'm driving for uber or delivering uber eats or something like that well, you know, if, if, if you, you know, if you have a lawnmower, start telling your neighbors like, hey, you want, me, want me to mow your lawn? You know, it's easy to make extra bucks. Yeah. People say that there is not enough uh, possible, especially now, like um, technology, mm -hmm. but also even just like hands on dirty stuff because nobody wants to do it. So if you want to do that, hey, you can build a big profitable company yeah. doing those things. I mean, you know, a lot of people like to get in, you know, contracts. Just even you know, there's plum of, plumbing, electric, you know, well, all that uh, stuff. Well, plumbing and electricity, you know, are a little bit different. Well, you got to go to school Because, you, you know, that's yeah. things that could, um, like a trade, you know. First. A couple of missteps could have pretty significant yeah, But if you went to school, yeah. you could, you know. Um, but, you know, if you're looking to get into, you know, that. side hustles to, you know, help, you know, create some of that extra income stream so that you can get into real estate easier or 
um, you know, stocks easier or whatever your way is that you think to get to that, you know, f level of finance. Yeah, it's that good you for do. young beginner. Beginners yeah. is so many you things. You know, when I was a do. kid, um, you know, I started mowing, you know, I was mowing the, the neighbor's lawn, you know, right next door. And then um, the guy down the street, a couple houses, saw me, you know, mowing his lawn and asked my parents, like, hey, does your son, like, mow lawns? And my parents were like, I mean, yeah. And so then I ended up mowing, you know, four or five of the lawns right around my parents' house as a kid. I don't remember, you know, probably 20 bucks or something like that. I was probably way undercharging them at the time. But, you know, now you can do things like that without even really a whole lot of, you know, getting, okay, you want to get into general contracting, start with painting. You know, that's a thing that's relatively easy. It's get relatively, in touch with like property managers. Yeah, low, you know, low barrier of entry. And, you know, if you're cutting in a wall and you get some paint on the ceiling, nothing is going to necessarily bad yeah, happen. And once you learn that, then yeah. you can hire other people too. You yeah. know? And that's how you grow mm -hmm. the business. Um, also, what the takeaway is what brought back, you know, doing something challenging mm -hmm. that you'd never done before, just taking that first step. As people get older, sometimes they get in old ways and stuck and they want to kind of take on new challenges or just kind of for the fear of feeling like embarrassed mm -hmm. or they or the feeling that they don't know what they're doing it's okay not everyone knows actually no one knows exactly 100 percent what they're doing all the time so if you don't take that first step of the mm -hmm. fear that you might mess up or you might finish last or you might you know, you already ahead of someone who didn't even take that step, mm -hmm. you know, and with the business is the same, like building a business, you figure out as you go, you don't need to know everything in advance, like, okay, yeah, you might need to write a business plan, but guess what, that business plan by far is not going to contain all the things that you actually gonna need to discover that you need to do and that you will be doing. So um, it's like a it's a journey, you know, mm -hmm. getting that one one first um, one foot in front of the other mm -hmm. and then not focusing on what the f that very final result will look like. I mean, you want to have sort of like mm -hmm. an idea vision, but you don't have to scare yourself like, oh, I have to build like a billion dollar company. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I'll be a failure. No, like. Right. You know, just enjoy it's, that journey. Yeah, it's almost and like, you know, with the Spartan race, um, I don't think either of us really knew what we were getting into because, you know, we're, I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, and I that's the know. beginner's naivete sometimes well, helps you. But you honestly, know, too. that was probably better knowing that there was going to be three pretty technical hikes. Like you steep know, climbs, you know, yeah. to 2,500, um, you know, feet of vert and, you know, some pretty technical you know, declines or, um, you know, hiking down the mountain. It was almost better not knowing that. <laughs> oh, yeah, you it's know? better because you'd be like, oh, I don't want to do it. It's like, that's hard. what happens when people get into sometimes business. They mm -hmm. think, oh, my, oh, man, you know, look at all these business owners. They look like rich and like they don't have to do anything. That's so far from the truth. So a lot of glitz and glamour you see on like Instagram gets a lot of people into wanting be like entrepreneur thinking like, oh, it'll be easy, you know, but actually it's a lot of hard work. It's fun. It's amazing. And I love doing it. Uh, but it years, 10 years of grinding every single day and the talk to any like founder that built right. big companies. They literally grind. It's not like glitz and glamour. You know, the, the thing to keep in hike. mind, too, is the glitz and glamour that you see on Instagram. That's not the end goal. Yeah, right? it's you not. Know, the end goal is to not appear or look rich. Yeah. The end goal is to be rich or wealthy and also or whatever. to benefit society in positive ways right. with your services right. and the flashy people on products. Instagram. You know, they they rented that. Jet probably and, for an hour and it didn't leave the tarmac. Well, not everyone, you know. but those people who actually have it not rented it, they only doing it because they know it attracts the kind of 
viewership mm -hmm. they want, you know, but they don't, they don't really think it's that cool. They know that the actual winning is more than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, business executives, I mean, like, look at like Bill Gates, you know, he's not a very flashy person. No. Clearly he has wealth, obviously. I mean, isn't he like the top five or top something like Elon Musk, He's doing Bill okay. Gates, and you know, they're doing okay. It's riches in the world. Right. But, you know, even just people, you know, some of the clients that I work with are fairly, you know, wealthy individuals. And if you didn't know that they were, you would have no idea. Right. You yeah. know, they're jeans, polo, you know, down to earth people. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, they have, you know, built their business from, you know, scratch or almost scratch yeah. and you know come up over the years um and it's not you know, about wearing chanel you know right i mean it's you know having nice stuff is, yeah it's nothing know, wrong nice, with that is but good but you know like you want to be wealthy you don't want to appear wealthy yeah exactly mm -hmm. um and you know it's about it the thing to success is if you offer something that benefits people services or product people need you will be wealthy like that's just unless you really are silly and you maybe sell away your idea and you don't patent or something but someone could take advantage of you but in you know those cases aside like if you just have something and you work at it you uh, offer good quality um, mm -hmm. it's it's just like universe rewards you if you try to if your end goal is to make money guess what you won't succeed your end goal should not be that like it's about really um, becoming a bigger person serving helping more people employing people providing good workplace and, um, and doing the right thing yeah you know and if you're in the services industry or say you're a consultant contractor or whatever you know doing the right thing might you know in the short run might not you know it might the actually most profitable, you know yeah it might you know hit, hit your bottom line you know you might maybe you underestimated something or um, you know you you messed up you quoted a client you know the wrong price you know obviously first thing is you know I, you know with consulting I never try to explain things away you know I never try to come up with excuses as to why something happened and and if I don't know why something you know happened or why it broke I'm like you know what <laughs> I, I don't know you know it, it, it just broke life you know is what happened to it but you know doing the right thing really builds that relationship and you know there was a case a couple years ago when um, you know a large software vendor um, you know changed some of the requirements and didn't really make it kind of clear to their their, their partners oh, I mean it happens yep. a lot yep and yeah. you know so when you know I you know when that came to light you know the first thing that I, I said to the client was like hey you know what this changed you know they didn't really make it clear to their clients you know or to their partners you know but hey you know we're the ones doing the work you know so this is what we're going to do to make it right and you know in that instance um you know i essentially credited back or really not credit just took off a couple hours of labor because you know i felt that that was the right thing to do and i think in the end i think the client probably would have you know, if I was just like, hey, this is what happened, they probably wouldn't mm -hmm. have had, you know, a really big deal about, yeah. um, you know, paying that labor. But, you know, I felt it was the right thing to do. And you know what? It's paid off in spades. It's reputation. Because, yeah, because, the, you know, you know, the clients, you know, they want to be able and to. And relationship. Yeah, they want yeah. that relationship Value. where for, you know, for, for me being in tech that, you know, they can kind of push that part of the business to, 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 to me, you know, to us. And not have to think about, okay, what are we doing for our tech, you know, cybersecurity, et cetera. And building that relationship where maybe it's a little bit detrimental to your bottom line right now, you know, it gives you information for the future so that you doesn't happen again. But, you know, letting your clients know that, 
hey, you know, I messed up. I'm going to do this for you. This is what we're going to do. Hey, it's my bad, you know, taking that accountability. Yeah, Mm -hmm. of course, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, like even uh, bending the rules of policies, you know, Mm -hmm. always like sometimes, not always, but I appreciate the companies that, for example, like certain cancellation policies, Mm -hmm. like, um, you know, we bend the rules. Like Mm -hmm. we have... At, at the spa, like we, Brilliant Massage and Skin, for example, that I run, um, is, yeah, we have 24-hour cancellation policy, and uh, and but you know what? Things happen, and we always take into consideration was this, like, medical emergency. We always will give credit to mm-hmm. that customer, you know? If it's, like, once yeah. it's not a repeat, like, occurrence and it's uh, or you know they got into car accident yeah of course we're gonna right. you know yeah. like that's that's like po- yeah policies is policies but right. but you then know, there's doing the right thing you know yeah and one thing in real estate that you know there's a couple of different like real estate groups that like you know I participate in and you know someone will ask a question hey this this is going on what, what does everyone think I'm not really sure what to do or trying to deal with this scenario and you know what I always say the best thing I think any landlord can do is if you're dealing with a tenant situation or or whatever even if you're just dealing with a vendor you know for a tenant situation is do what you would want your landlord to do if the situation was reversed, you know? Yeah, but the, I mean, yeah, I mean, some people have different philosophies because there's different landlords out there, mm-hmm. you know, and different tenants. And mm-hmm. some tenants might not understand, like, well, why would landlord have to raise my rent every year? You know, if I was a landlord, I would just keep the rent the same. But, you know, the tax are more expensive. If we need to refinance the building, a mortgage is going to go up, you know, because the interest rates went up. So there is a lot of nuances. Plus the labor, you know, that we pay contractors has mm-hmm. gone up a lot. Materials goes up. So you have to do that. I think it goes back to, you know, what I had said a little bit a while ago is, you know, just doing the right thing, right? Yeah, but, you know, you, know, you being, do the right thing. Doing the, the right thing, the being the landlord that you would want to have if you were a tenant, yeah. or, you know, which is just really doing the right thing. You know, if a if a tenant reports that, hey, you know, the, these stairs are rotten, well, you know, yeah, yeah that's you got to go and fix it, is, you know. If a tenant is saying that, you know, their their neighbors are pulling into their parking spot too quickly, okay, well, you know... <laughs> We need to have a, a, a conversation, you know. But, you know, there's different things that require different levels of attention. But, you know, you can always kind of go back to that doing the right thing. you know. And, and, you know, the right thing at the time might not be the right thing five years from now because, you know, you do what you can with what you know at the time. And hopefully that's the right yeah. thing. You know, that's yeah. all we can do. And the quality and integrity, mm-hmm. you know, and that's why we mm-hmm. always provide the best place possible. We maintain the units mm-hmm. as if we were going to live there, you mm-hmm. know, and always every time when I... And we do. <laughs> we live the, in one yeah, of our units. Get the unit presented for rent. It's spotless. It's like, yeah, I could definitely want to live here you know I wouldn't mind in any of my units I could live so that's kind of our threshold for the quality Mm -hmm. you know it's not like ah you know it's just a rental let's just put these old um kitchen cabinets that are falling apart I mean you know the the old adage of you know landlord special or you know the things like that is in a rental, you know, are we going to put granite in the, the the kitchen? It depends on the market. Probably not, you know. Well, if, unless general, it's luxury, it's probably high not. end rental. But you know what? I'm not even sure if I'd really want to rent, you know, granite in, in yeah. you know, my kitchen. We don't have granite in our kitchen. You know, there's, someday maybe. Yeah, but you know, there's you know, using a good mix of materials that you know are kind of middle of the road. You know, not the not the cheapest, not the most expensive, but something that you know. But it has to be clean. Yeah, too. you're comfortable putting your name on, you know, and then, you know, your tenants are going to be happy because it's a quality rental. You know, you're maintaining it, and you know it might affect your bottom line a little bit, 
but you know you're going to get really high quality tenants that are happy to be there that know that you treat the place well and they're going to treat the yeah. place well, well it's you know mm -hmm. you can demand high quality tenants because mm -hmm. you know that your unit is high quality mm -hmm. and then at the end you win because everyone wins you know at mm -hmm. the end you're happy yeah, yeah and and they mm -hmm. maintain the place they respect the place because mm -hmm. you respect the place mm -hmm. um it's it's that remember when we talked about paying now more to pay less right. later right you know it's like pay a little bit more you know to really get those units up to where they should be rather than trying to you know do Take little advantage of the market that yeah, there's do a little not band aids, enough you know. supply. And okay, you know, maybe it doesn't need a brand new stove, you know. <laughs> but if the stove needs to re be replaced, you should re replace it, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at the end of the day, talk to your tax professional about a lot of those, um, you know, upgrades are also tax deductible, you know. So, but, you know, I think, you know, we're trying to bring it back to you know what we were talking about the before it's just you know these little steps and taking things one step at a time and if you say you buy a four unit apartment building or two or even if it's just a two unit you know it might seem a little daunting to say like oh my god I've got to replace two kitchens I need I, I got to do all new flooring it's like well, well hold on you know what's the most important like one at the time yeah, well and what's the most important thing you know safety obviously is the most important so if there's any safety concerns you know replace that um, and then you know what's the the next step is kind of what's the biggest bang for the buck you know painting flooring lighting that's relatively inexpensive but makes a big impact and then you kind of chip away at it and that's almost like with the spartan race it's like okay well i know you know i think we ended up it was about 15 miles total and you know if you think about that at the beginning it's like wow, that's a lot, but, you know, on one of the really, the first really big hike, you know, I was just like, well, you know what, I think, you know, I've, I've got probably about 10 more minutes until I get to that next kind of service road on the side of the hill where it's it's going to be level and, all right, I'll take a break. All right, so that's that's what I'm thinking about right now. Yeah. Um, you know, and then you get to there and then it's like, okay, well, Got a little bit more to go. How do you how do you eat an elephant? You know, one right. bite at a yeah. time. And I remember years ago, I was watching a, a cycling race, and um, you know this this one cyclist, he was favored as essentially being the one that was just going to crush it. He was going to win it, you know. And like you know, he started off, and I think his like his chain broke, you know, or something like that. And then he was behind, and then you know swapped out his chain and then he got um and then it was a flat tire it's like this guy had basically everything that could go wrong with his bicycle go wrong in this this race but you know what he didn't give up he kept pedaling and he actually won the race at the end of the day yeah. and you know they're talking to him on the podium and they're like wow like i mean you had all these issues and he's like well you know what that's cycling you know you just got to deal with it and they're like well you know what's your advice for someone else you know that you know and he was just like keep pedaling he's like that's my advice just keep pedaling you know just keep moving forward yeah and it's the same thing with the spartan it's just like what's what's the best advice just keep going just keep going you know one one more step Two more steps, three more steps, you know. And doing and having the person and people or the team around you that are supportive also matters. Yeah, you know? totally. If you were there by yourself that whole time, yeah. probably could wouldn't made it. Yeah, probably well, said, you know, screw this, I'm going yeah, home. Well, My feet too, are hurting. Yeah, is you know surrounding yourself with like-minded individuals. You know, people there. It's like people from all over you know the united states were there it was so. uh u.s or no was it world champ yeah world championship yeah. Um, yeah but you know there's a lot of different people and people are cracking jokes people have like bluetooth speakers and they're like blaring music or like if you can walk crawl because yeah. there are people crawling you know if yeah. you can't walk that moment just get on your force and crawl yeah you know? i mean there's just to finish there it. was some yeah. places where you almost had to i mean you know i'll say i you know, crawled yeah we crawled point. a couple yeah. of times because it was just so steep and i'm like you know and what? muddy and slippery yeah it's like whatever i don't care i'll crawl i don't care or roll so yeah, like so a couple people rolling. were rolling yeah 
But you know, it's that it's that mentality of it's the not giving up. Yeah, of not giving up, not necessarily looking or knowing what the end result is, but knowing that you're gonna keep putting one foot in front of the the other. You're gonna keep pedaling on your bicycle. Yeah. You're going to start with, you know, five dollars to put into the stock market a week and then go to six bucks. Eight yeah. bucks, ten bucks, you know. You're gonna mow your neighbor's lawn. Okay, well, you know, maybe now you're mowing your neighbor's neighbor's lawn. You know, it's you wanna start a massage business. Okay, well you do massage. Okay, well maybe we're gonna incorporate, you know, hot stones or, you know, just the little things. Well it ball it snowballs. Yeah. And you keep adding, improving things, taking feedback from your customers. Like if you're a restaurant, a little pizza place or whatever. Yeah. That's, I mean, with yeah. IT consulting, you know, a lot of, you know, the way that I started, you know, my IT consulting business was, you know, just word of mouth doing, you know, residential break fix, you know, going and helping people, um, you know, that needed help with their, I don't know, with their TV or, or whatever, you know. Sometimes a lot of running around, maybe not the greatest, you know, in terms of ROI, but you know what, then you... Um, you know, work with an individual, help them out their home. And they're like, hey, you know what? Like the IT company we have never calls us back. Like maybe you can come into the office for, you know, a day and kind of help us out with some well, stuff. Well, they so, call it like the eat shit phase, mm, like the first, mm, you know, yeah, like the, the first. Eat poopy phase. Yeah, like you <laughs> have to do some of those jobs that yeah, you maybe not ideally want to do. And it's almost like but paying your dues, you, get it going. you know, but, you know, that is how a, a lot of business is built is just getting your name out there. And, um, you know, I was working with one company, um, a law firm. They've been a long client, great client for years. Um, actually, probably like 20 years. It's crazy how long they've been a client. But, you know, I've gotten other clients through them because, you know, one of the attorneys was like, oh, hey, I was playing golf with this guy, you know, and he was talking about this and gave him your name. And it kind of snowballs from there. But the, the way that it snowballs so quickly is by building that reputation of, you know, doing the right thing, being honest, you know, quick turnaround, being ethical, um, you know, those are the key things for any business, you know, is the, the quick turnaround, but quality quick turnaround. You know, you don't want to do something just to get it done. Um, but then, you know, that being ethical, being empathetic, putting yourself in someone else's shoes and, you know, always going back to doing the right thing. And even though that sometimes that right th thing for the client or the customer or your tenants is maybe short term not detrimental, but, you know, short term impacts your bottom line because maybe you have to go a little above and beyond, you know, and kind of just eat that cost. Yeah. But, you know, that's how mm -hmm. you get reviews, you get mm -hmm. word of mouth, new referrals, mm -hmm. and you can sleep at night knowing that, you know, you did the, the right best thing. you could yeah. and and you mm -hmm. have the the, you know, if anything goes wrong, you can attest that, you know, you did the best you could. And that's all. And that's the same with sports, you know, mm -hmm. or fitness or goals or eating better. You know, you just have to do that one thing and then you build that uh, resilience and habit, you know. Mm -hmm. And then your brain also uh, don't see it as... Um, scary or difficult because our brain you know it's can be afraid of unknown so it's like mm -hmm. we have to hack our brain our, and thinking into tricking ourselves it's okay you know yeah. just just do it yeah well i mean we're at we're getting up there so we got to round it out well you know, let us know yeah. what's your mm -hmm. experience with taking first steps yeah, and I'm interested to hear, you know, maybe other people that have, you know, really challenged themselves, you know, what was your experience, you know, and what what was, you know, what kept you going? You it's know? always mm -hmm. um, that pivotal moment or realization you get in those hard moments. I feel like, at least for myself, I found like it's mm -hmm. always been transformative. And that was the other reason why I wanted to do the Spartan, just to mm -hmm. kind of now as I'm getting ready to start selling franchises, you know, we're working on our franchise disclosure document. Like I 
I kind of need to get back to challenge my body and mm -hmm. brain even more to get yeah. like, and I always kind of challenge that through the fitness. But mm -hmm. so thank you for listening. Let us know mm -hmm. your uh, challenges and ooh, ooh, a little yeah. clap on the studio yeah. audience here. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I think subscribe subscribe check Maybe our leave links a down comments. below if you want to connect on instagram yeah and i think too you know we just want to hear what other people are thinking too yeah you know what other people's thoughts are and would love to uh hear hear from you so um we'll see you in the next yeah see you in the next episode brilliant wellness healthness <laughs>